Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Schell with Nouvelle Veterinary Research. Today, our informational video is regarding the lameness evaluation in the horse. Again, this is just basic information, stuff that I think every horse owner should be aware of, be able to do themselves. At the very least, they should be able to be familiar with these types of techniques so that when their veterinarian does evaluate the horse, they know what's going on, what the next step is, and what certain things do mean. The first thing that I do personally when I have a lame horse that's presented to me is, is we just need to kind of get a general baseline assessment of the lameness. So I will have the horse owner walk the horse off away from me, walk them back so I can kind of just see where we're at in terms of uh, lameness. Is it obvious? Is it extremely subtle? Then we generally get a little bit of a history from the client themselves. You know, is this something that's persistent? How long has it been going on? Is it just seen under saddle? Is it just seen at a certain gate itself? Um, or is it something like a laminitis type of deal to where it's very, very persistent and high grade? So we need to start off and evaluate that horse. The first thing that we will do in most cases, and the first thing, first thing we need to keep in mind is, is about 80% of all lamenesses will be down and in the foot. So that's generally the first place that we try to start with. Hopefully by walking away from us and walking back or trotting off and trotting back to us, we can get a pretty good idea of which leg is involved so that we can start with that leg itself. Again, generally, once we have that leg isolated, we will start with the foot and work our way up. So the first thing we will do is start off with the foot. Okay, for all intents and purposes, we're gonna assume that this particular horse has got a lameness here on the left fore. And the first thing we do, obviously, in a standing uh, position is, is we evaluate this leg for any obvious abnormalities that are going on, swellings, wounds, punctures. Um, looking down here through the tendon area, do we have any swelling or obvious sensitivity when we're just applying light pressure? Um, is there a swollen joint? Um, going down into the pastern region. Any abnormalities there? Same thing with the hoof, looking at the coronary band region. We want to rule out anything that's obvious here. If there's no obvious areas, the first thing that I will start to do is, is we will then pick the foot up, I will rest it on my leg, and I will start to work my way from the sesamoids down here, working my way up the tendons, which would be the uh, superficial and deep, and the suspensory, working my way up. Applying gentle pressure as I'm doing that, feeling for any swellings, trying to elicit any sort of obvious response. Uh, we're going to push in here at this point of the attachment to see if we get any sensitivities there as well. Um, again, just running our fingers down, looking for any obvious areas of swelling, pain, heat, or sensitivities. Um, we'll generally kind of take a feel of the knee here, try to get a range of motion, see if there's any joint sensitivities in the knee itself. Um, and then we will work our way down through the pastern region, back area, again, feeling the coronary bands and the bulbs, the heels, um, seeing if there's anything obvious that's jumping out at us. Again, we got to keep in mind that a high percentage of lameness cases are down and in the foot region itself. And uh, so now we don't have any obvious sensitivities. We're going to start off by evaluating the foot. Um, we're going to clean out the sole area. I am using a hoof knife. If you choose to use a hoof knife, you have to be a little bit careful because these guys can be sharp. We don't want to do any damage or take off any excess tissue that we don't need to. The whole goal is just to clean the surface off so we can see and that we can apply some hoof testers. So we've got it cleaned off. Again, we're just going to look at the sole itself, looking for any defects in the areas that are draining, you know, anything obvious. Is there a rock that's lodged in here? Um, anything that's going to jump out at us that's abnormal. In some cases, we'll have horses that will step on nails that will go into the sulci of the frog. Very, very obvious. We can pick out and see what the problem is. In terms of hoof testers, that's generally the first step that we will do. There's many, many different types of hoof testers. These are adjustable. Um, obviously, we can adjust them to the thickness of the sole, the width of the, uh, of the heels, depending on the breed of the horse. Uh, but what we're going to do is apply these hoof testers, generally working our way around the foot, and then we're going to apply them to the frog as well. The biggest thing I can tell you with hoof testers is, is that we need to be careful about the position of the hoof testers. If the bottom part of the hoof tester comes into contact with the coronary band or the skin up and in this area and we apply them, obviously the horse is going to feel a little bit of pain, so we're going to have a response to it. And that's going to be a, a false response. So we need to be very wary of where our hoof testers are at. So we're going to adjust these hoof testers for this guy, and we're going to apply them in this region here. Again, I always kind of keep my hands down here so I know where the bottom part of the hoof tester is. And we're going to apply some gentle pressure. And what we're going to be doing is just working our way around the foot, applying the same amount of pressure, trying to figure out whether if we have got a response. In cases of horses who have just been shod and maybe have a hot nail or an abscess that's popping up, commonly when we apply the hoof testers around that nail or where the nail was, 
that's when we will have a response to the testers and we can kind of isolate where it's at. Um, in cases of laminitic horses, generally we will have a response right here in the toe region um, when we're applying the hoof testers just because of the rotation of the coffin bone itself. In terms of navicular horses, uh, this is when you kind of have to open these guys up. A lot of the cases we apply these hoof testers to the outside uh, walls back here. And we will squeeze in. Generally they will respond to those. Again, we need to be cautious that we're not on the coronary band itself. The other area that we will test for uh, navicular or heel syndrome horses is applying them directly to the frog itself, keeping in mind again where our bottom tester is at and applying pressure downwards. So we're squeezing the heels in, applying pressure to the navicular bone. Most of those horses will respond. And here we're putting pressure directly down onto the navicular bone and they will also respond. So laminated horses tend to respond up in this area. Navicular horses back here in the heels, um, abscesses, hot nails tend to respond basically out here in a white line region, depending on where that nail is or where the abscess is. So most of the time that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with the foot. If we run our hoof testers down in this area and everything comes up clean, meaning we have no response, then we start to work our way up the foot itself and up the leg, uh, moving into the pastern region. One thing of notation when we're looking or evaluating lameness, especially uh, down in the foot region, is, is back here above the sesamoids, um, if you just gently run your fingers, you will kind of feel like a cord-like structure underneath here. There's one on the outside or lateral surface. There's one on the inside of the medial surface. Um, that's basically our network of arteries, nerves, and veins. Um, you can apply light pressure to those using your thumb and your forefinger, just like so. And in the normal horse, we generally do not feel a pulse. It does not take a lot of pressure. If you put too much pressure in these areas, then you'll basically you know, occlude or block the vessel. So you're really not going to get much of a pulse, but it's just light pressure there, light pressure. And in most cases, we do not feel or detect a pulse. You might detect a very, very light pulse, but horses that have got laminitic problems, have got an abscess, um, generally their pulse is not only elevated associated with pain, but it becomes more obvious or prominent. In some cases we may have an abscess here on the uh, outside hoof wall, and in those cases the outside pulse will be generally stronger than what it is on the inside. So we can use these pulses not only to help us localize the pain below this region, but in some cases we can actually use that pulse to help us localize as to where it is in the foot, where that problem's at. So then we can go and apply our hoof testers in those regions to try to correlate the two. So if we've got a hoof exam, everything's checking out fine, then we obviously will move up into the pasture and move further up the leg. Um, in my case, I generally always check the tendons first, so hopefully we're ruled out there. But the next general step is, is to start to do some flexion tests. Um, generally, every horse owner is very familiar with flexion tests, essentially where we're flexing or stressing a joint, holding it for generally a count of 30 seconds to a minute, and then having the owner or a technician jog the horse off and then bring them back towards us. What we're looking for in those types of situations is, is we are looking for a responsiveness to stressing that particular joint. So if the hoof is clean, we can't see anything um, obvious with this horse, then the first thing we will do is start to flex basically the pastern, in the coffin and the fetlock joint and we will do so by a method similar to this. Um, some people will hold them just like I am, some people will rest them up on their leg, different techniques for different people. But what we're doing here is grasping the hoof, cranking it up to where we're basically stressing the coffin, the pastern and the fetlock joints. Um, we're going to hold that for about a count of 30 seconds and then I will have the owners jog the horse off. The first couple strides in most situations, um, the horse is a little bit off, but what we're looking for is long-term, do they maintain a lameness or a sensitivity to that area? Biggest thing we're looking for is favoring of the leg, a head bob, some sort of a signal that we're going down the right track. Um, you have to be careful when we're flexing these joints that we do not flex other joints at the same time. So we don't want to take this foot up like this and flex the fetlock and pastern and coffin joints because we're obviously flexing the knee as well and potentially even the uh, elbow region. So we want to try to keep it down low, keep this joint in a relaxed state, flexing these joints only, starting off with that, jogging them off. If we come back clean in this area, then again we'll recheck the tendons, any sensitivities, obvious swellings, pain, heat. Next one is, is we're going to flex the knee. So we will take this joint up, completely flex it, hold it generally for about a count of 30 to 60 seconds. Again, jog off, come back towards us. In most cases of lamenesses, 
majority of them are pretty much either from the knee down or from the hock down. You know, do we flex the shoulders and the elbow, I'm sorry, the shoulders and the elbow regions? We do, not very often. Uh, if we haven't localized to this leg, we have done all of our flexion tests and we can't seem to localize or we want to further localize that lameness, then that's when we actually will start to get into nerve blocks or even joint blocks. And there are several different blocks that we could do working up the leg. Uh, when we do a nerve block, it basically blocks from that point down. So we're helping to kind of localize where the potential problem is at. So there's essentially several nerve blocks that we can do in this leg, same as the front and same as the rear. So now we're gonna move on to how you evaluate the uh, rear legs for lameness. All right, so now we're gonna evaluate a hind leg for lameness in terms of flexion tests and overall evaluation. It's really not much unlike doing the front leg. Things are just a little bit different back here in terms of anatomy. Um, obviously, we've got the hock here. We've got our fetlock, we've got our pastern region, we've got our hoof. Um, again, evaluating the horse grossly, looking for any abnormalities, swellings, heats, punctures, traumatic uh, areas of, of destruction, wounds, that kind of thing. Anything obvious that's jumping out at us. Evaluating the joints. Do we have any distension or swelling that's obvious to the eyes? Looking again at the tendon areas. Do we have any swellings, heats, wounds, drainage, anything? Same thing with the uh, fetlock joint, same thing with the pastern, same thing with the foot. We're just looking for anything obvious that's gonna jump out at us. It says, hey, this is where the problem's at. So if we don't see anything obvious, again, we're gonna start off with a foot again. Um, same as what we did with the front. And we're gonna pick this guy up. And we're gonna just tr try to clean him out here a little bit. And we're gonna apply our hoof testers again after each form. Same as what we do in the front. Same type of approach. You know, again, working along the white line area where the nails would be with the shoes, looking for things like hot nails, abscesses, working our way around the foot. Some gentle pressure to the uh, hoof testers themselves. Again, keeping in mind that we're not going to impinge on the coronary band. Uh, we can also apply them to the frog itself, just like we would in the front for navicular problems, across the heel bulbs. Again, making sure that we don't have any areas of sensitivity um, that might be obvious to us. Putting the foot back down, again, we can evaluate for digital pulses again. Same thing as what we discussed on the front. You can feel the vasculature right here on the outside as well as on the inside. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of experience to know where it's at and how to feel for it. But the pulse normally shouldn't really be present in the average horse. We can use that pulse as an indicator that there's a problem from that point down and also potentially localize as to whether if it's inside or outside of the foot or pastern region. So, if everything checks out good down there, we don't have any gross, obvious abnormalities, the first thing we will do is start off with flexing the pastern in the fetlock region, like so. We will gently hold these guys for about 30 to 40 seconds, release, the owner will jog the horse off, bring the horse back to me, and we can hopefully evaluate whether flexing or stressing that joint created any um, uh, increase in lameness for that animal itself. If the fetlock comes back clean, then the next test we will generally do is what's called as a spavin test, which is basically like so. What the spavin test is doing is flexing the hock and the stifle itself, even putting pressure up here at the hip region. So we're essentially flexing three joints at once. The reason we do this is, is because we, in the horse we have what's called as a reciprocal apparatus, which really does not allow us to separate these joints out when flexing. So we have to flex all three at once, and we're going to hold this for generally about a minute, minute and a half, jog the horse off and see if there's any problems. So that's our lameness exam in a basic format. Again, you know, we start off looking at the basics with these horses, looking for things that are obvious, wounds, punctures, swollen joints, any area of swelling that can kind of help point us and tip us off as to where the lameness is coming from. But, you know, during the course of this video, we did talk about the basics, going down, looking at the foot, because that's where a predominance of lameness issues do come from, um, and working our way up, including joint blocks and flexion tests. Um, I do feel this information is very important. Uh, and hopefully you find it valuable as a horse owner to kind of give you a little bit of a knowledge base as to what we are doing as veterinarians when we're examining your horses. And I hope that you do find it overall useful um, in your horse career. If you have further questions for us, please reach out to us at www.curos.com and we're more than happy to help you out. Thank you.